Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 6.2 Next Gen IPS Custom Signatures. So we're going to create a custom signature that's going to prevent the ability to store on an FTP server. But first, let's test it to make sure that uh, it is working, that we can do uh, the store uh, action and, um, and confirm that everything is working as expected at this stage. So great, we've got the file up. Let's rename it real quick. And we're renaming it because I want to be able to, to get the file after to show you that I'm not able to store but still able to pull the file. Okay, so that's good. Now let's create that custom rule or signature. All right, so let's give it a message. In this case, we're gonna use a FTP store command. And here we can do the classification. Now I created a custom uh, classification so you can obviously select what's there, whatever makes sense to you. Um, I've, I've created a new one just to show you that you can do it called attempted command um, and then gave it a description. So now we'll select that custom classification. And in our case, we're gonna do obviously TCP. We could select the direction. Here we're gonna say any source, port and IP, and then we're gonna pick the IP address of the destination and port 21. Here we're gonna grab the content type and then we're going to uh, use the store command and I don't care about it being uh, uh, case sensitive. So um, at, in this case, you can add additional detection options, right? To make this very granular and very specific. In our case, it's very simple. We just wanna block any store commands to the FTP server of uh, with an IP address of 10.1.253.221. Okay, now that's done. So that, that part is easy. Um, now we're gonna create a custom next gen IPS uh, uh, rule set. Now we could have used one that already existed. I'm just gonna show you right from scratch. We're gonna create one based on the balance, uh, security and connectivity uh, default base policy. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna enable that, uh, that new rule that we just created or that custom rule. All right, now we'll click uh, rules, but you can also see that it says drop when in line. So the action when in line, it will drop based on the, um, the signature being enabled. So let's uh, go in here, classification, and we'll grab that new classification that we created and we should see that signature, there it is. Let's have a quick look at it. We can see that it's disabled by default. There's the uh, rule itself. Let's select drop and generate events. Okay, that's good. All right, now we'll save out this policy. And when we, uh, after we build the access policy and assign uh, the specific access rule uh, and associate this IPS uh, policy to it, um, when you, uh, what you're gonna see is when we try to store the file, obviously the FTP server will never see that command because it's being dropped before it even gets there. So you won't even see it in the logs itself, right? Because it's being blocked before then. And, and likewise, when we pull the file down, you're gonna be able to see that, but we'll show you that shortly. Um, so let's go into access control and we'll edit an existing policy that's in place. And let's add a new rule. So this rule here is going to be a rule for FTP uh, server. The source is gonna be, in my case, inside to outside, but that could be outside to inside, wouldn't really matter. And um, so we're gonna go sandbox zone to outside. And we're gonna grab, obviously, uh, in my case, I wanna be as, as specific as possible. So I'm gonna grab the uh, network objects as well that are very specific and we're gonna and you don't have to do this but I uh, in this case I'm just gonna highlight it we we're gonna actually come in and use the application of FTP itself and then the inspection will uh, add that IPS uh, policy that we just created perfect and we'll make sure that we're logging at any connection and, uh, and to the event viewer, okay? And you gotta, 
make sure that it is in the right spot, right? Uh, again, if you have lots of different policies, you may have to move things around. Um, in my case, I'm just going to move it to the top in this specific in this specific section of the policy. And we can see IPS. And I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to deploy it. And then we'll get ready to test. So again, this policy will be pushed to the next gen firewall. And while it's doing that, let's go to analysis. And we'll go to events for intrusions. And we'll get that ready. Perfect. Okay, so the policy is going to push. And let's get our client back up. Let's clear the logs on our FTP server. Let's connect. We'll log in here. And there's that original file, but let's 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 do the store of the file and we can see that there's no registration of the store command. We don't see that at all here, right? And we can see that it's just uh, sitting there as if it's trying, right? So let's let's have a quick look at um, the events and see if uh, we've triggered an event, which we should, right? If everything's working properly. And there we go, perfect. So we can see it's triggered. Let's drill into this a little bit. And we can see it dropped when in line. That uh, dark black arrow means it's dropped. We can see the IP, source destination. We see the protocol, FTP. We can see the application itself. As we continue to scroll across, we'll see that um, we, we certainly are hitting um, the IPS policy that's in, that we put in place. There it is there. So that's, that looks good. Let, let's uh, quickly drill into um, this a little bit deeper and let's see um, the actual store command within the payload itself. So there's the file name and there's the store command. Perfect. So we know that worked as expected um, and we can see that it's, it's timed out. Now very quickly let me clear this and we'll just pull this file down to make sure that you know what that it, it is functioning we're not blocking all traffic so you can see here it certainly is working so creating a custom signature pretty easy to do um, and uh, and that's it